Hi, welcome to the workshops of the Arlington Heights Society of Model Engineers. My name is Jeff. The club located in Arlington Heights, Illinois is a, an HO scale model railroad club. We're doing what will be hopefully the first of a series of videos on how to in model railroading. We're going to start with a basic freight car kit assembly, a hopper car by AccuRail. We're going to go through the assembly and weathering steps. We're also going to renumber this the kit so that it's not an exact match to the completed car. Okay, so we're going to need some basic equipment for tools for assembling the kit. Um, hobby knives, I've got them two knives, one with the number 11 and one with the number 17 chisel blade. Some tweezer style sprue cutters for removing parts from their plastic sprues. A metal scale rule to use as a straight edge. An NMRA gauge. A sanding stick. And some grease which we'll use when we put the couplers together. We also have some Fowler plastic solvent cement. This is my preferred brand but any brand will work and a foam cradle to work in to protect the car while we're working. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is take a look inside the kit and see what we have. Now this kit is a custom decorated kit that was offered by the Illinois Chapter of Professional Car Clubs and is decorated for Studebaker Corporation and their Chicago and South Bend Railroad. Now I did take a few steps in advance to prepare for this. This is the car body that's in the kit. I have already gloss coated it in preparation for decaling. We go inside. We have a bag with our couplers and trucks. Renumbering decals that came that I was able to get with the kit and the sprue with assorted parts including the underframe an instruction sheet and two weights which I painted in advance this was done with Acrylico Vallejo model spray paint and this is a Panzer Dark Gray what they call Panzer Dark Gray so I am going to start by assembling the underframe of the car and then we will add the numbering decals and hand it, dull coat it, and do final assembly. I'm going to start by removing the underframe from the sprue. Best way to do that is with a flush cutting sprue, sprue cutting tweezers. You just come in. You want the flat edge against the part where you want to save it and just squeeze and snap. You don't want to twist these off because that leaves a mark behind on your part and risks damaging it. Once the part's removed, take a sanding stick, just a couple of swipes with it to take off and clean up any remainder. You can run a fingernail over to see if it's smooth. I have now removed the three brake gear, the tri-valve, the cylinder, and the piston from there and we're going to assemble them onto the B end of the frame. You can tell the B end of the frame by the holes that are mounted for it. There's a small one here. Maybe easier to see if I point it out using the knife blade. And in here, and the mounting pad on top of the coupler box. In well, this may not show on the camera, the holes for the brake cylinder is actually a half moon type hole so it orientates the cylinder in the correct way. So 
if we can get this in the piece will just pop right in to the mounting hole ah and it popped right in nicely so we're going to secure it on the back side with just a drop of glue so after we installed the reservoir I installed the tri-valve and the brake cylinder in their locations. We're now going to set the underbody aside to let that dry and turn our attention to renumbering the car. So the next thing we're going to do is renumber the car. We're going to use renumbering decals from AccuRail. Now, AccuRail offers renumbering decals for all of their models they manufacture. You can order them directly from their website and it's a great way to be able to increase your fleet of cars and renumber easily because the decals are printed in the correct color on the background color of the car. Since they're printed on the background color of the car you don't have to remove the old number to renumber the decal, renumber the car. Prior to starting I gloss coated because it's best to apply decals to a glossy surface. The tools we're going to use are our X-Acto knife with the number 11 blade, a pair of tweezers, our scale rule as a straight edge, distilled water, a paper towel, micro set decal setting solution and Microsol decal set setting solution. It's also helpful to have a pair of scissors. So we're going to start by removing the decals we're using. The car came numbered uh, 1028, 1026. We are going to use renumber it to 1034. So we can cut out the decals from the sheet. Take care to make sure you don't cut through your numbers. The other thing that is useful to have is some type of a container, and I'm just using an old pill medicine bottle to store the de individual decals in while you're working on them. You always want to trim as close to what you want as possible. So can get in and just put the decals into our container. So now we're going to start with the decaling process. We're going to start by taking our decal for the side of the car. We will soak it in distilled water, and you always want to use distilled water so you don't leave mineral residue behind on your car. And that'll take about 10 seconds. We'll leave it submerged in the water. Then we'll set it aside on a paper towel while we apply our micro set setting solution to the car. We'll just put a small puddle where the decal's going. We will then take the decal slide it off the backing paper and into position and 
get it marked into position with a combination of paintbrush and a toothpick. Now we've got the decal. We're going to come over to our distilled water. And we're just going to hold it under the surface of the water for about 10 seconds. And set it aside on our paper towel. Take our micro set, which is the blue setting solution for micro scale. And very carefully just dab it over the numbers that we're changing on the side of the car. We just want to create a small pool there. Now we're going to take the decal, set it down near where we're working. Grab a toothpick, and gently slide the decal off the backing. there. Now you may notice that the number has changed. In the process of putting the decal on, you may have noticed that I had trimmed it a little too large and it was covering this white stripe underneath. In attempting to trim down the decal after it had soaked, it took too long, the glue had dried out and was made the decal unusable. So I cut out the next set of numbers on the sheet and switch to number 1031 for this car. The so next step you want to do is apply Microsol from the red bottle. This is a stronger setting solution. It softens the decal and helps it conform to the model. When you do this, you just want to put a small puddle near the edges of it and on the decal, that'll help snuggle it down onto the car. Once it's there, you don't want to touch that decal. It's extremely soft and can tear easily. Now that the micro set has dried, we're going to take a close look at it and look for air bubbles. And you just want to make sure that the car, the nut decal is sitting flush against the car and there's no little air bubbles in there. And I don't see any. If I had, I would use my knife to just poke a hole in the air bubble and then we would apply more of the Microsol solution. With this done, and since there are no other decals to apply to this side of the car, we're going to turn the car over and we're going to repeat the process for the car number on the other side. Soak the decal for about 10 seconds and set it on our paper towel. Grab our micro, so micro set, just put a small pool over the existing last two digits of the car number. Always a good idea to close up your bottles so you don't knock them over. Grab our decal. Make sure you have it right. Set it down. on the model and use our toothpick to slide it off the backing paper and into position. You sometimes have to move it up 
closer to your eyes, especially if you're older like me, to make sure you've got it lined and straight. And then allow that to set and settle down and dry. Okay, once the decals are set, we just want to give it a few minutes so that it settles down and dries. We're going to now add our Microsol setting solution to the bottle, to the model on this side. And again, just a dab of it on the decal we just put in place. With that on, we're going to give it a few minutes to dry, and then we'll tackle the numbers on the ends of the car. The Microsoft has had a chance to dry, so we're going to take a quick look for air bubbles. And having light bounce off of it at an angle is a great way to spot them. And I don't see any here, so this side is good to go. Our next step is going to be to do the renumbering on the end which is the same basic process. Okay, we're going to soak the decal. And apply our micro set. We're going to start with add the Microsol again. And by the way, this video is not sponsored, but these are products that I like and work very well. So again, we apply it to the decal and we let it settle the decal down against the model. So these cars were produced as a special run by the Illinois chapter of the Professional Car Club of America. They represent cars owned by the Studebaker Corporation and their wholly owned railroad. It was their plant railroad in South Bend. It was the Chicago and South Bend Railway. And it was used as their implant railroad, but because they incorporated it as a separate entity, it interchanged with a number of railroads and work plants other than Studebaker's. These cars were used to haul coal into the plant for their steam plant, their steam boilers and heating systems, and to haul out the ash. So we're going to check real quick for air bubbles and don't see any here which is good but if you do find them just poke the air bubble with your hobby knife with your number 11 the tip of your number 11 blade and reapply the microsol and that should settle it down and get rid of them last decal for the other end of the car and into the water it goes
I'm going to add the microsol on top this model, this one. And let that snuggle down against the model. So with the couplers, or the decals now in place, we're going to give them time to really settle and dry before we add an overspray of matte finish, clear matte finish to them. I've already inspected the last decal for air bubbles, and it's good to go. So we're going to turn our attention to back to the underbody of the car. We gave the brake gear equipment time to dry, and that is settled in set nicely. So now we're going to install couplers. Now the kit comes with Accurail's Accumate couplers. The standards at our club are to use metal couplers. So I am using Katie's number 148 whisker couplers. And the draft gearboxes and gearbox couplers that come with the kit. So we can use our sprue cutters to get in and remove the parts from the plastic sprue. Okay, we've removed the draft gearbox covers from their sprues. They do need a little bit of cleanup because there's a little tab you can see right in here in the curve section which goes up against the truck and that's easiest to do with the just the tip of the hobby knife just kind of carve it off and around and get it nice and smooth. The couplers are going to get installed. Now remember you're looking at the car from the bottom so you want the couplers installed with the uncoupling lever uncoupling trip pin pointing up in this case. And then set the coupler cover in place and that curve will fit okay we're now going to install the couplers in the coupler gearboxes you just set the coupler in place one thing I actually like to do before that though is I will take a little bit of grease them put it out on a paper towel and this is just a graphite, powdered graphite. And I will take a micro brush. And pick up some of that greasome. And burnish it on the inside of the coupler, the hole of the coupler. Just kind of rub it in there. And do the same thing on the draft gearbox and around the, the pin of it. By getting that in there and rubbing it in, it helps the coupler move smoothly in the gearbox. So we get the coupler in place and since this is a whisker coupler we don't need a centering spring in here because it has them built onto it. And the draft beer gearbox cover slides into place and a screw and I know it's hard to see among my hands a screw goes into the hole start to bind a little bit and just tighten it down with the first coupler in place we want to just test to make sure that it moves smoothly which it does 
So we're good to go and ready to move to the other side. So again, we're going to get that in place and drop the coupler cover in and get the screw in and then just screw the coupler pocket cover in place being careful not to over tighten you want to make sure the cover is secure and the coupler is moving freely and check your work frequently. If it's too tight and the coupler isn't pulling center, just turn the screw off a quarter of a turn. Now you're ready for your cup, your trucks. So we'll get those out of the truck bag. These are the Accumate two-piece couplers that come with it. We're actually going to discard those. The trucks I pre-painted with the same black that I used on the weight, the dark gray from Vallejo spray paints. When I painted them I installed the plastic wheel sets that came with the kits in them to serve as masks over the sockets. I then discarded those and I'm using wheels, metal wheel sets from Inner Mountain that like to roll around on you. So the first step in doing the trucks is going to be using a tool such as this which is a truck reamer or a journal box reamer. They're sold in a number of lights. I got this from a tool specialist at a train show, but Micromark also carries them. You simply insert this the way you would a tr wheel set into the truck, and while applying pressure to the journals, give it a turn, and it will actually cut any flash out of those journals, and turn until it, you feel it moving smoothly, remove it, clean out the cutting blade and flip it around to do the other side. For that axle, when that's done, switch to the other half of the truck and repeat the process until you've done all four of the journal boxes on here. This will help the trucks roll much more freely and give you better performance on your cars. We have finished cleaning out the journal on these so we're going to pop the wheel sets in. Now you may be wondering why I choose to use Intermountain metal wheels versus the plastic wheels that come with the kit, which will work just fine and will be run well. But the metal wheel sets tend not to pick up as much, pick up and leave as much dirt on the track. They also tend to run a little smoother. They also add just a little bit of weight to the car, which can come in handy because most kits are a little underweight by NMRA standards. 
So as I put them in, I give them a quick spin and I can see that they're spinning smoothly and nicely, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, at the Arlington Heights Society of Metal Engineer, our standard is metal wheel sets on all equipment. Part of that is because at some point in the future we plan on installing a signaling system and so we will be needing to use metal wheels to have tad resistors to the cars so that we can pick up where cars are on the layout. The reason I change out the couplers is the KD couplers are a metal coupler versus plastic so they have more strength and last well in longer trains. So with the couplers and the wheel sets installed in the trucks we're ready to install them but there's one last detail that I want to do on them before we do that. Okay, we're going to do one thing more with the trucks before we go, and that's paint the springs on the sides of the truck frames. So we're going to put out a drop of paint. This is uh, Vallejo paint. This is model air number 70.871, which is called Leather Brown. I like that for using paint, for using a nice rust color and I'm just going to take a dab of paint on my micro brush I'm actually going to dab off a lot of it and just touch it to the spring detail on the side of the truck it adds a little bit of color to it and adds a nice touch to them And we'll do the same thing on the other truck. Now we're going to install the trucks. We simply set it on the truck bolster and with our screw. screw it in. Make sure we got free movement on here. This is still a little loose so we want to tighten down. You want to have free turning and on one truck a little bit of side play which we have here so that's good and we repeat the process the other truck. They're all attached, they spin freely, and one has some tilt to it, so we've got a good point. One thing we did not do earlier is check the wheel sets with an NMRA gauge just to make sure they were engaged, which they are, and that's always a good thing to make certain of. They're easy to change, to twist out of gauge if you need, twist them a little to get them into gauge, but I've found the Intermountain wheel sets very rarely have issues. So the next step we're going to do is we're going to take the body of the car outside and we're going to add a clear matte finish to it to seal the decals and get the car ready for weathering. I'm going to use clear matte finish. This is a Rust-Oleum 2X Painter's Touch. It's plastic compatible. You always want to make sure you're using plastic compatible paints with your models.
nitro gloves come in handy because it lets your fingers hold the model. A quick over spray. Give it a few seconds to dry off. Hit it again. You want to make sure you get all four sides. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm just going to run it across the tops, just to make sure we don't have any of the gloss. on the inside because that will affect the ability for our weathering materials to adhere to it. Now that the paint has dried, the clear finish, we're going to add the weights and they just drop into place. You can glue them, but it's not necessary. And then we're going to take the body of, that we did and we want to make sure we have this in the right way, so we want to look at the ends for the side that has the brake stand, which is over here. So we want to set the brake gears to that on that side. The brake gear. And then this whole subassembly drops into place. Can apply a little bit of pressure to snap it in. The next step is going to be to glue the mechanism that allows the hopper to open in place. And these parts are small and a little on the tricky side to get in and they will not stay in place until the glue is there. But you want to kind of get them in and held in with a finger or two and then you can run a drop of glue along the edge and capillary action will pull it into the joint and let it hold in place. We're then going to repeat for the other side of the car. Now that the glue is dried on these, we're ready to go into the final step, which is going to be the weathering of the car. This will turn this nice brand new painted car into looking like the older car we have. For weathering, I use a number of techniques. use one basic technique. I use a product called Pan Pastels. This comes in a number of different colors. We're primarily going to be using um, a burnt umber shade, a red oxide, red oxide shade, um, a brown rust color, and a dark dark gray and we may touch up a little bit with this which is kind of, gives kind of a mud look to it these all come in a 
as part of a weathering set and I've added some to it. This is uh, neutral gray extra dark and we may use the medium gray as well so we'll take the lids off of these. I use, this is a makeup sponge, Pan Pastel also spells, sells sponges. You can just keep using the same grungy sponges, doesn't really matter. Okay, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start by fading out the, the paint a little bit. I'm going to do that over here and put some on there and then we just kind of tab it off a little bit. We're just kind of doing like a dry brush technique and then we just run it down the sides and it weight weighs it down we can add a little bit of darker gray on top a little bit of dirt and dust on the sides same thing on the ends the light color is great for highlighting ladders Use a dry area of the sponge to highlight some, rub some off and reverse it a little bit to work it in. brown above the trucks where dirt's been kicked up the inside we'll start with some of the dark gray get the sides the ends get it all coated well add some rust on the to the slope sheets these cars would get rust in the slope sheets because sometimes in the winter they'd have to light fires under them to melt the coal that had frozen together and that would cause paint to blister And we need to and with that the last step when working with pan pastels is nothing they will hold well to a matte, good matte finish, which is why we sprayed these with the clear matte finish when we were done. You don't need to seal these with an additional clear coat. They'll hold up to normal handling just fine the way they are. Overall, we've spent about three hours working on this. Now I will say I did 
push through to the weathering stage a little quicker than I normally would. Normally I would let that clear mat finish dry overnight before going into weathering. But as long as it's dried to the point where there's no discernible paint odor, you're good to go. And as you just saw, it takes a minute to weather a freight car with pan pastels. And if you overdo it a little bit, you can add a darker color on top to re remove it. You can use a clear, cleaner portion of your brush, your sponge, to pull some of it off. And if worse comes to worse, you can wash it off with water and start over. So that's the basics of the car. Let's take the cars out to the layout and uh, see how they run. We're going to take them out to the layout. We're going to go out to our Waukegan area and Little Club's Agron Motors plant. Mm -hmm. Without going in manually and coupling it, I can't move without pulling forward again. Oh, go ahead and pull forward. I hope you enjoyed what we've done today and learned something. If you have, please make sure you hit like and subscribe so you can see whatever videos we come up next with. If you there's something you'd like to see us do, by all means, please leave a comment and let us know. This again was shot from the Arlington Heights Society of Model Engineers in Arlington Heights, Illinois. 
If you're in the area and would like to come for a visit, we're here on Friday evenings. Please see our Facebook page for details and contact information. There will be a link in the description.